happy days we had here on the Duke's course at Woburn in the Dunhill British Masters. And those three days left us with this leaderboard as the players went out to complete their final 18 holes this morning. And what a prospect with Seppi Ballesteros paired with the young Englishman Robert Lee in the final match and with Bernhard Langer only three strokes off the pace. Well, it was Robert Lee who provided the early fireworks. He's got this very difficult uphill putt at the short second to save his par. Can he do it? Indeed he can. Par saved by Robert Lee. But that wasn't all, because at the next hole, the third, he has this putt for a birdie. In it goes. That put him to ten under par, and now he was only one behind Ballesteros. Well, over the next seven or eight holes, Ballesteros just about held the edge over Lee, but then suddenly another man came very much into the picture, and this was Gordon Brand Jr. Here he is in the rough on the right of the 16th, and he's chipping in for a birdie, which put him ten under par. So let's now pick up uh, Gordon Brand Jr. as he plays his second at the 17th. Great opportunity of another birdie. Seve Ballesteros on the 14th, his second shot. And, uh, that's gone into the sand. There's only a two shot gap at the moment. Birdie at the 14th, so he's within two shots. And an opening here. And it's not that close to the pin, but it's on the padding surface, which is all important. Heavy from the sand, as you can see, a very awkward stance. Right foot out of the bunker. Got a chop down very quickly on this. Very difficult shot. Well, that's pretty good with the problems he had. But we'll just leave that hole. We'll get up to the 17th where Brand, Gordon Brand Jr. at 10 under has this putt for a birdie. And he gets it. Not the slightest doubt in his mind, he's 11 under. Three shots off the lead. Seve for a par, Robert Lee's putted up. He's not dead, he's two or three feet away, short of the hole. Seve then to save his par. Oh. The shot dropped. Drove back to thirteen under. of his playing partner. Robert Lee for a par four to 14. So, he's just one behind with four holes left to play. The 18th green, Gordon Brand from Bristol, who's been going along very well indeed, birdied the last two holes, his third shot at this uh, par five 18th hole. And played it well, but as you can see, could have done with a bit more stick on that one. So we see that uh, only two strokes separate the top three men. Ballesteros, Lee, and Brand Jr. We have indeed a big finish. And there's Seve getting his par on the 15th, which means that he's pinched a shot from Lee, because Lee has already played four and has a putt for a five. Yeah. Robert Lee holding out then for a bogey five. Minus 11 
Just two shots behind the leader, Seve Ballesteros. Gordon Brand at the 18th. If he could hold this for a birdie, it would put him at to 12 under. And that might well just sneak it. No. Nope. Uh, Langer at this 425-yard hole has played, played a beautiful second. He has this for a birdie three. Should take him to 10 under par. Oh, look at the swing across there. Oh, my word. Vicious swing across the face of the hole there. Stays nine under. Lee, who's stuck to his guns very well today. Two under today. He was three under at one time, 11 under overall, and it really is very tingly. It's very exciting out here today. He's gone for the sliding one, left to right, round the corner. He's overdone it, cries of four, clatters the woodwork. No, <laughs> he's ricocheted way out onto the fairway. 17 to tee, Bernhard Langer with the long iron. 329 yard and gainly finish from Bernhard there. 329 yard par four. Relatively easy hole for these pros this. So Lee very fortunate there uh, to come out on the fairway but he has left himself a very long shot. It's a very good 210 yards. Robert Lee's second shot up to the 16th green. Uh, long iron and well struck indeed, but will it hold the green? Not quite. And that's all right. Seve leaving his tee shot on the high side of this uh, fairway. In fact, has an overhanging branch right in his way. He's got 175 yards to go. how he struck that slowly may have pulled it that's the danger you just tweak at the ball close the club face yes he played the sort of drive table tennis drive and he just closed the face at impact and he's pulled it into the left hand back and i must confess semi does for the first time begin to look a bit twitchy he's huffing and puffing he hasn't won for a spell and uh, winning is always very difficult 17th hole bernhard langer's second shot About 100 yards, pitching wedge. Looked to me like it may have hit the top of the pin. If indeed it did, he probably would have been closer had it not done that. 16th and Seve's third shot, lying well. He's bent. Actually lining this up to hold it. Little bit strong. And Seve with uh, a very missable putt for his par. And Robert just off the back of the green. He's got a good line on it too. Beautiful putt. Beautiful putt. That should be safe enough par he'll just nudge that one in i'm sure and he'll stay 11 under two seven unders in the clubhouse at the moment christy o'connor's just finished with a 71 and of course brian marchbank back to sevi this part to stay two strokes ahead He hasn't won for a bit, he's had a bad 
bad run and a lucky run, some silly shots, but he's there. Well, that was another wonderful example of the Ballesteros magic up and down. In two from that bunker, intense concentration, as Peter was saying, keeps him 13 under and preserves his two-stroke lead over Brand Jr. in the clubhouse and his playing partner, Robert Lee. Herr Langer surveys this one for a birdie. He's nine under. And my word, he hit a good putt on the last green. Did everything but go in. Really did make a savage turn across the hole. I thought he'd made it. This to take him ten under par. Not to be. Stays at nine. Got a two-shot cushion now on his playing partner. And really being very fortunate to find a lie like that and a clear shot to the green from what was a really quite indifferent one iron off the tee. Just what he needed, that'll settle him. Clive, what's young Robert Lee lying like down there? Well, he's got 95 yards to go to the pen. He hasn't got an easy shot. He could run it very low, or he could go for a little gap in the trees, but uh, this is a very difficult shot. So Lee, having hit the further tee shot, bit blocked out by this tall pine at the corner of this dog leg par four hole. Yes, it was out of that semi rough, tried to turn it over, run it, lost control of it. Over the green he goes. So it looks very much like Sevi Ballesteros to me. So the final tee shot, Bernard Langer. Nine under. <coughs> yes, good hit. Goes down the hill, finishes. Yes, on the slight down slope. Well, it looks like uh, young Robert Lee is getting a drop from the sponsor's sign. There we are, no penalty, of course, for that. So, Robert Lee's made a good drop here, but he still has a difficult shot. He uh, might go the air route with a sand iron and try and pitch it on the edge of the green, but I rather doubt it. He'll probably knock it forward into that bank and let the bank kill it. Relying on the bounce, bubbling up the hill, of course, and it's always very difficult. Langer at the 18th, second shot, one iron. Trying to chase it between the bunkers. Just pushed it a bit, it's going to catch the... No, it doesn't, yes it will. Just catches the front bunker. Back on the 17th. Tournament leader. Tournament leader by two. It'll be a par. And of course, with this 18th uh, hole yet to come for him, out of bounds all the way down the left. We saw he nearly went out of bounds yesterday. Two shots is the lead from Gordon Brandt, who's already finished, and from this young fellow as he stands here on the 17th green. That was unlucky. Good putt, refused to drop for him. 
10 under par as he moves towards the 18th tee. Well, tremendous excitement here, almost at the captain's deck, Kirby Muxlow. Perhaps a little bit more exciting than that. Here's Langer. Third shot. Nine under par. And now look at this. Oh, he's unlucky there. A little bit of spin that might have gone in. What a marvellous bunker shot. And big crowds here this afternoon. This tree lined 18th and Seve with a couple of strokes advantage very sensibly taking an iron and trying to swing smoothly now he's has he tweaked it i do believe he has if he hits one like he did at the 17th he'll be very close to the out of bounds and i do believe Sevy's getting a little bit edgy and twitchy because he nearly put it out yesterday and now he's out out in out uh. it's all right Seb, but we can't oh if he could eat those shafts if they were made of licorice <laughs> You see how even the great ones, they get nervous and he hasn't won for a while and... Oh, he suddenly looks 18 again. He looked 47 there for a second or two. But he's all right and he'll be able to nudge it somewhere up the fairway without tearing his britches on the barbed wire fence. So he should be all right. Young Robert out with a big timber. Now, if that's straight down the middle, that's a very handsome drive. Yes, it is a handsome drive because enormous pressure. He has won before he won in Cannes a year or so ago. But uh, he hasn't really been in the driving seat too often. The view up at the green, Bernard Langer just surveying his putt for a birdie four. If he can get it, he'll finish at ten under. Well done, Bernard. Over in 36, round in 70, 2, 7, 8, 10 under. And Bernard Langer. Pete Coleman. Good combination, those two. Huge crowd at this 18th hole. Clive, a bit of good fortune there. Yes, it was indeed. He's in a very similar position to where he was last night, and uh, he won't get that good a stance to it. I don't think he can uh, get a stance where he can really give it a full crack, but he can certainly move it down the course. And uh, yesterday seemed to present him with no problem making a birdie, so it'll be interesting to see what he can do this afternoon. <laughs> He's all very relaxed about it. <laughs> he may be just worried about those little barbs on the wire. It's difficult to explain when you get home. Uh, he just flicked it out. And he's punched it up the fairway, and it's going to stop short of the bunker, is it? Yes, but in the light rough, he's OK. Now, from the centre of the fairway, Robert Lee, having a crack at it. Ten under. He started it right of the green. It's drawing in a bit. Needs to hop the bunker. Will it? No. Nearly tried hard, but he's caught the front bunker. Now, Sammy, who's played a few shaky strokes over the last few holes, but has recovered magnificently. Here was his third shot to the 18th. Leading by two. At the pin, if it's the right distance, and it is. Lovely pitch. Now, if Robert can get down in two from the bunker, he will tie with Gordon Brand for second place, 11 under. Looks good. Good. Could have done with just a whisker more. But very good, and still looking as if he's actually enjoying it, which is marvellous. 
He's played jolly well today. And now Seve. This for a birdie four. This for around 69 today. Nice to have a cushion of two and just nudge it up to within three or four inches of the hole. Now, that's a very nice courteous gesture here. So he's going to mark. Now, the reason for that is if he were to putt out, there would be tremendous applause and scuttling about, and he's left the stage clear for young Robert so he can hold out first because his putt is more important than Seve's. Now, here we go for a birdie four. Just no steady. Oh, and he's got it in. Put the five, which is a par at the last hole. 39 home, around a 71. 2, 8, 8. 10 under par. He ties third and fourth place with Bernard Lager. So he holds out just from two or three inches, and at last he's won an event in 1986. And what a good one to win. The Masters champion for 1986, Seve, and to win just before he sets off the United States will have done him a power of good. And so the long-awaited first win this season for Seve Ballesteros gained him £33,333. Let me tell you about Lee Trevino, last year's champion in this event. He had a 69 today, his best round of the week, to finish one under par. Nick Faldo had a fine 68 today, he finished five under. And Sandy Lyle, the Open champion, a 73 he finished two under. Well, after they'd finished their round, I spoke with Stevie Ballesteros and Robert Lee. How did you feel when you went out this morning, when you, you stood on that first tee again with Stevie? Well, uh, what were your feelings? I was pleased to be out there. Well, I enjoyed it yesterday all the way around and thought, well, playing with Stevie again, I thought I'd be playing one of us two a win. <laughs> did he give you uh, right. any encouragement all the way around? Did you speak to each other or not? No, Seve's a hard man when he's out on the course. <laughs> Seve's joining us at this moment, you've probably heard that. Seve, many congratulations. You must be relieved. A winner's come at last this season. Well, finally I won. Uh, I thought maybe uh, after all those many things happened to me this year, I was there every time, but uh, I always I was making mistakes or somebody else was uh, just um, uh, making incredible things to me, like uh, Robert today. He make. Uh, Unbelievable how many putts he made. I can't really remember how many he made. Uh, Lucky, eh? Uh, no, really. It was a good play. It was a good play. Them. I know. And also, he hold it from uh, 60 yards to the 13, and uh, I think he played fantastic, and uh, I'm very sure that people enjoy his game. Has anything changed in your game that's come good this week to, you know, to make things improve for you? Not really. Nothing. Yeah, Just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, my game has been very much uh, consistent the whole year around so far, and uh, the only difference that was uh, the, the final result, <laughs> winning. <laughs> yeah. 